My name is Sarah Hubbard. I'm the Communications Director for the Animal Ag Alliance. Uh, the Alliance is the largest and oldest coalition working on behalf to uh, share farmers and ranchers' story um, and speaking for the entire animal agriculture industry as a whole. We're a nonprofit organization based here in Arlington, Virginia, and a lot of the work that we do is to share uh, the proactive ways that farmers care for their animals in the land while feeding us. So I feel like we have a really unique and important role. We've been monitoring these bills quite closely, and although we're not a lobbying organization, we definitely see this as an important way to protect farmers from undercover extremists who have one goal in mind, and that's to eliminate the entire animal ag industry. That may seem a little extreme, but if you do a little digging into these groups, they're very outspoken about their vegan agenda, and we just think it is not fair for farmers and ranchers who are doing everything right to be attacked and have their reputations maligned as animal abusers because 99% of the time that's simply not the case. Uh, I will add also that the Alliance is very active in promoting animal welfare guidelines and care guidelines that the industry has adopted um, throughout each species. So I would encourage everyone to please um, research, look at those programs and learn just how much farmers care about their animals and uh, how committed they are to producing safe food. That's a good question and uh, many companies and farms have animal care policies that new employees sign that indicate that they will repeat, um, will contact their supervisor and uh, let them know if they have any questions about a situation that arises or any doubts that an animal is not being cared properly. And to be honest, that's one of the reasons that we are so opposed with, uh, to these, these activist groups who go in, sometimes get footage, usually do not report that immediately to their supervisors, but instead keep the footage and release it at the most politically opportune time. Because these are very powerful images, they definitely have an impact on voters. But waiting weeks or months before you release a video really doesn't have the best interests of the animal in, in mind, in our opinion. Um, uh, House Bill 589 is really a direct reaction to the undercover investigative work of HSUS and other animal protection groups. It's really a blatant attempt to kind of quash exposure of cruelty that's occurring on factory farms. They want to stifle uh, discussion about what's going on and they want to criminalize really lawful behavior of simply recording what's going on. So the Des Moines Register just today uh, opined and editorialized against this legislation. Senator Tom Harkin has condemned it. Uh, we're really hopeful we can slow it down in the Senate. I work for the Iowa Soybean Association, uh, headquartered in Ankeny, Iowa. I serve as Director of External Relations and also as Coordinator of the Iowa Food and Family Project, which was just launched about three weeks ago. For the Iowa Food and Family Project celebrates the miracle of food, uh, as well as the men and women who provide it, and its mission is to really inspire and nurture uh, positive relationships between farmers and consumers to the benefit of environmental quality, economic prosperity, and human vitality. And we do that by identifying opportunities for farmers and consumers to engage, to visit, to have dialogue, to meet the challenges as well as the opportunities uh, that lie ahead for both the consumer and the farmer. The Iowa Food and Family Project uh, is an organization that doesn't lobby or develop policy, but certainly Farm organizations and farmers and really consumers in Iowa are following the issue very closely because it does come down to uh, issues of uh, transparency uh, as well as what is at the end of the day in the best interest of the animals that farmers care for. Uh, the legislation or the proposed legislation, which is still currently being worked on, uh, there continue to be various amendments added to it. Uh, there is it, there is some unsure. Uh, some people are unsure as to whether or not there will be time yet this session uh, in order to achieve an end to the issue and to the uh, piece of legislation. But I think it all centers around uh, what's fair, what's appropriate, and what's transparent. Uh, is this about uh, actually uh, reporting animal abuse or alleged animal abuse or is it about recording alleged animal abuse, many times of which the video can't be proven or disproven 
Um, and so there is also an issue in terms of transparency. Yes, farmers are very open about what they do. Uh, many Iowa farmers host field trips, host reporters, host tours. Um, but with regards to transparency, it's a two-way street. And are the people who are seeking employment at farms, are they being transparent in who they are? Uh, we have instances where people have used fraudulent information uh, and misidentified themselves, not only in terms of seeking employment, but also even in responding and offering um, input into this proposed legislation. People who claim to be Iowans in support of the or against the bill actually don't even live in the Midwest. So those are the issues at play. I, we have not, I don't think anyone knows for certain what the outcome of the legislation will be. But again, it really comes back to those issues of, of transparency um, and is the real intent to report um, alleged animal abuse or to record it. There is nothing to stop employees uh, right now from if they, in fact, many employees, when they sign uh, an application for employment, do note and do agree to report abuse or substandard practices as a term of their employment. So employees have an ethical obligation to live up to the standards of their employment uh, those that don't uh, are those who have sought employment for the purpose of recording video. They do not report the alleged abuse. It can go as long as six months uh, before the situation is reported uh, and addressed. So every employee, and I'm sure you do, I'm sure other employees do, not just farm employees, but yes, we all have an ethical responsibility in our place of employment. If we see something that we know isn't right, uh, that is not ethical, uh, we all have a duty and an obligation to bring that to the attention of the appropriate personnel. Well, the Iowa legislation really clearly illustrates how factory farmers have a lot to hide from the public and that animal abuse runs rampant on factory farms and slaughterhouses and they know that it's damaging to their industry for the public to know about this. What they should be doing is taking a leadership role in increasing animal cruelty laws, putting cameras in, in these facilities to deter abuse and to offer incentives to whistleblowers. Instead they're essentially criminalizing someone from documenting animal abuse which is the most powerful tool that we have to bring these abusers to justice and create a more compassionate society for all, all creatures. We certainly believe that there are First Amendment issues with this legislation. This would severely restrict freedom of press and freedom of speech. People can't even photograph or distribute images of animals being mistreated on factory farms. And in a free society, the best tool that we have in moving forward and making social change is knowledge. And if we're not able to expose what's going on there, it really uh, creates a lot of roadblocks for, for our work. There are no federal laws that protect animals on factory farms uh, during their lives there. And so there are no watchdogs other than nonprofit organizations like Mercy for Animals. We're the ones that are watching out for the interest of these animals and challenging the industry. So we work with news media, and when they're not able to receive this footage or broadcast it, it's, it's a serious issue with the First Amendment and with the freedom of press. And Ms. Sweeney has been spewing so many outright, blatant, bold-faced lies about the work of animal activists. She said that the footage is staged, which is completely untrue and ridiculous. And she said that people go in and abuse the animals, which is, again, completely untrue and false. It shows the desperate measures that these industries are willing to go to to pass bogus legislation that will harm animals and public safety and public health. Because so many of these investigations have led to recalls and scrutinization of factory farm practices that harm human health. 
uh, salmonella and eggs, the uh, Westland Hallmark case in California where it was the largest beef recall in U.S. history, that was the result of an undercover investigation by animal protection organizations. So everyone, no matter if you care about animals or not, should be very concerned about this legislation. We're certainly exploring our legal options with this initiative. I, I can't say right now what we will do moving forward, but we believe that there is a strong case that it's unconstitutional. And it's certainly in, in bad interest of animals and, and people and consumers. You know, it's, it's the public's ability to know how animals are being treated that allows them to make informed decisions. And what the agribusiness industry is trying to do is silence whistleblowers. They're trying to shove cruelty into a dark corner. Um, but what they should be doing is they should be leaders on this issue. They should be working to increase animal cruelty laws if they truly cared about the animals. But what we see is that they have a lot to hide, and that's why they're passing this legislation. There's an outrageous bill in Florida that would make it a first-degree felony, it's the same as murder, uh, for photographing animals in cages on factory farms. It's completely absurd. Um, it doesn't look like it has nearly the chances of passing there as the Iowa piece of legislation. And I think anyone with common sense would see that this is completely ridiculous for the same reasons that the Iowa piece of legislation is ridiculous and that murder should not be equated to helping animals on farms. And that's essentially what this does. It's about a chill effect on activists from speaking truth to power. And in a free society, the only way that we're going to make things better is if there can be a free discussion and a free debate about our treatment and obligation to farm animals. And without undercover investigations, we simply can't expose what's going on. And they know this, and that's why they're so scared. In fact, these, these pieces of legislation speak to the effectiveness of investigations. They have been effective nationwide at bringing animal abusers to justice, both companies and individuals, and resulting in jail time. It's been effective in changing corporate policies and leading to uh, increased animal welfare laws um, on, a, on a state level. So they're effective and that's why they oppose them, but it really shows how morally bankrupt these industries are when they're willing to lie and manipulate people to pass legislation that harms animals, harms people, and we feel is a violation of, of freedom of speech and freedom of press. It criminalizes taking photographs and distributing them inside of these facilities. So it is um, detrimental to whistleblowers. And our society has progressed because people that are in the inside and have witnessed abuses and witnessed violations have spoke up. And this does have a chill effect. It silences them. And that's not right. I mean, this law is, is very discriminatory against animal rights activists. It only targets people working in animal facilities that are exposing abuse. Um, it doesn't target people that may work at a nursing home and, and witness abuse and blow the whistle on that, or people that may work at a child care or a school that witness abuse. So, you know, we have to ask ourselves why this is, and I think the answer is very clear, and it's that animal abuse runs rampant on these factory farms and the industry is very worried about the public knowing about this. Iowa is the largest egg producing state in the country. It's one of the largest pork producing states. So this legislation, if it passed, would really shield a large portion of the industry from public scrutiny. And these industries are in business because of consumers buying their products. And consumers have a right to know where their food is being produced. And without these investigations, they get a very distorted view through industry propaganda of how these animals are being treated. And that's not right. There, there's certainly a concern about if this law passes, and hopefully the Senate will see the light and see that this is unethical on so many fronts. But if it does pass, we are concerned that it will set a precedent across the country, especially in major agricultural states, where the majority of animals are confined on factory farms. And um, that will shield a large number of these producers from public scrutiny and allow animal abuse to run rampant unchecked. Well, when our investigators go undercover into these facilities, they do their jobs just as they're instructed, and they document what's going on there. And if uh, factory farms don't want to be ex exposed for abusing animals, they shouldn't abuse animals. And that's the bottom line.